turned. There is no more coming back. The internet is the new, the new life. Amazon outside double his profits. And then it's this rush against the uh, ticket man. You've got 20 <laughs> minutes to go somewhere. Come back. And come back drunk. And then they act like they're big men. Mm -hmm. Coming drunk. Drunk at work. Their behavior is not correct. Making sense. What are you guys saying, man? Welcome to today's episode. How you guys' days been, though? Busy. Busy. Busy, busy. How about yours, man? I'm chilling, man. Do you know what? Before getting here, have you seen the hail that were coming out today? It was actually raining the amount of hails that were coming down. It was, well, what kind of face are you making, bro? Do what you're staring at, it's a bit mad. You know what, yeah, um, yeah. I don't know why we're talking about weather, man. Bro, it was just, I'm just trying to... Oh, I can't lie though, it was sunny at it one point and then it started hailing and raining and went sunny again. I was like, yo, what, what's going on? Yeah, no, it's mad, fam. It's not the summer that I want. And it's the end of July. It's not the summer I want. But yeah, first of all, on the social buzz, in it, there's this topic that I wanted to talk about. And it's there's an article that I was reading on BBC and it talked about how tech giants profits kind of like gone proper high because of the ban pandemic. So... I just want your thoughts, both of your thoughts on how that's going to be affecting like actual stores, like in physical stores. Because now people have been relying on buying things online, right? And majority of people, like my sister, when I talk to her, she kind of feels more comfortable to actually buy more stuff now online than rather than going. Like you said, you said the same thing as well, no? Yeah, what was the last, the last time? The last episode, yeah. you said the same thing. So yeah. the, uh, what do you think the main issue is? Like regarding bringing people back into store because that's actually helping each city's towns. Like the only time I need to actually go into the shop yeah. is either for jeans yeah. or suits. Other than that, I've never had to go to the shop. It was always online. Online. Yeah, because jeans, I don't know what it is, but even if you know your size, you go to the next shop. It's it's, it's some sort of like different sizing. The other time I went to, um, I forgot what shop it was, but. I got two pairs of jeans. I went home, tried it on because of COVID. We couldn't actually try it on. Mm -hmm. And then when I put it on, it didn't fit. But I was too lazy to then go return it back because I just couldn't work with it. So I, I gave it to charity. You give but it to yeah. Suits as well. Um, I'd say that's the that's the probably the only other thing. But other than that, yeah, most of my shopping is done online. It's so much easier. Click, click, done. I've got my clothes. Well, what about you? It's a weird one, you know. For um. I don't really use online shopping much. I guess if it's on Amazon or if it's on eBay, I will do online, right? Yeah. But everything else, I still prefer to go into stores. I can't lie to you. Mm. Uh, my thing is just the physical touch of the product, uh, being able to feel it, mm. being able to change it, wear it. And it's also the thing of return policy, right? Mm -hmm. I feel it's so, still so much easier to go into a store and return okay, so something. Yeah, yeah. The whole waiting for you know, uh, a van to come, and that takes a part of your day because you don't know when the van's going to come for them to pick it up. Mm -hmm. Or even if you have to time. give it to um, post of year, you have to print out labels. Yeah. and Well, Hermes stuff. and stuff like that when they come it's collecting. It's just yeah. long, isn't it? Mm. So that's the main reason, even though all this stuff is moving online, I still prefer to use, you know... Um, physical stores. Physical masonry brick and mortar stores, you get me? Well, you can actually feel the products, try them on. Actually, Do you know how many times I actually bought stuff and I'm like, yo, this jeans, I thought it was going to fit me, but it's actually like too skinny. Do you know how tight those jeans were? Which one? I was thinking about, okay, maybe let me try it again. I might, you know, yeah. probably lost some weight, you know. But then I tried it on again. Ah, I couldn't put the button up. So then how would you think then, would, how would that affect the actual stores? How would they be able to like kind of bring people back in? Because a lot of people now are actually relying on online stores. They would just... It can't be bothered. Look at the uh, the last time I spoke about Topman that closed down. All the all most of it's all I think it ASOS. Um, ASOS, ASOS bought it out. Yeah, and now it's just an online store. It, all of its closes online, so it just shows. But isn't that sad for local businesses? I think though? it's too late. Too late. It's too late. Mm. The tide has already turned. There is no more coming back. The internet is the new. The new life. Look at Amazon. The outside it doubled is the its old. profits. Mm. Who goes on their shopping trips anymore? The maximum thing you do when you go out is to chill with friends, maybe go to restaurants and stuff like that because you can't eat online yet. Mm -hmm. 
if you could eat online, people <laughs> wouldn't even do that. And you technically can't <laughs> order takeaway and it's it. Yeah. Now talk, I'm talking about physically no, yeah, eating online. Yeah, actually, that's, you know, like weird stuff, digital. Have you, what's that NFT things that have been coming out? You know about NFT. Yeah. Like all these digital oh, yeah, yeah, art. Yeah, yeah. Like how people are actually now buying art online, digital. Like digital art. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Yeah. I think that's just a new money making scheme, personally. You think so? Yeah. You can physically Some sort of flex. Nothing. Yeah, and you they'll flex on it. Arm and a leg for it, but yeah, in terms of digital stores, um, yeah, it's the new. It's a good thing as well. There ain't nothing wrong with you know. Why should businesses pay so much in rent, uh, for these high street stores? I think the major thing, and I think the major issue that's killing off the high streets mm. is local councils. Local They're council. not providing any sort of free parking, or the parking is so far away from the stores. That's another thing as well. You're not allowed to park anywhere in town anymore. No. It's all green zones, green. But I'm thinking, like, what are you making it green for? No one's going to come. No one's going to use your stores. And then you charge so much people. Another thing is time. Yeah. Mm. Time. If you think about it, I need to go into town. It's going to take me about 10, 15 minutes, yeah? I need to go now look for parking because I'm looking for free parking. I'm, I'm a bit, you know, stingy. And then, um, if you think about it, that's going to take me another 20 minutes just looking around for the right street. Then I need to go into the store, look for the clothes, then buy it, then come back. What? And then it's this rush against the uh, ticket man. You've got 20 <laughs> minutes to go somewhere come back. and come back. So now you're going into a store with the purpose of only grabbing where you One thing. Grab. That's now playing, that's bad for the business because mm. you're no longer going to do the whole searching, searching and mm. looking and browsing. That's how they make most of their money. Mm-hmm. So now with no searching and browsing, that's less money for them. Time is money. So for me personally, time is money. So if I'm spending nearly two hours, yeah, to just go one buy one pair of jeans or, or some sort of like drum bombs or what, whatnot, I could do that in five minutes online mm-hmm. if you think about it. Click, click, Find click. what you want exactly. And plus, when you know your your preferred sites, yeah. Uh, let's just say ASOS or um, or Boohoo, Boohoo Man, anything like that. You know, you know their level of quality or whatnot, and mm-hmm. you're familiar with their products already. So, simply just looking for what you, you what you find, and then you click it. It's it's easy as that. Just five minutes. Mm. And you're saving. Uh, so, what do you think is that. the future for small businesses? Small, nothing. No one said that small businesses can't take advantage online. Mm-hmm. That's actually small businesses. That's where you should be taking advantage. Yeah. Mm. Don't be go hiring these big stores, um, putting out all this money outlay into the wrong thing. Put your money into your product. Make your product quality better. Put your money into your marketing. Reach as many people as you can reach online. The chance of somebody that will need your stuff to just walk across the street, somehow clock onto your branding see that the branding might got something to do with what mm. they want, then come in, have a look at it, have the time to have a look at it. You, you know, day by day, that chance and possibility is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Mm. Yeah? The best thing to do is use your marketing budget, make sure you can target these people online, show them what you need to show online, and then they're more likely to come to you anyway. And it's less overheads for you as well. You can do it from your garage, from, the gar- from your home. From your home. That's true. That's, that's yeah, the exactly. future yeah. of small businesses. You don't have to have that store open. Like mm. I said, you could probably do it. You have all your stock in your room or in a spare room. And whenever you get orders, just send it out. Exactly. So uh-huh. you're, at, you're you're killing two birds with one stone. You're at home and you get money. Mm. You know what I'm saying? If we're talking about now, how can the businesses that have still got these stores yeah. and they want to be stuck in the past. How much are they paying in town as well? Town. Okay. So firstly, in town, well, we're based in Northampton, right? So more likely, you're not going to get rent for less than 2000 something a month. Yeah, especially yeah. on the high street. And then mm. you're going to get um, you're gonna get rates as well, charged by the council as well. Mm. Rates based on how big your premises is. So that can be another four or £500 pound a month as well. So now you're saying, okay, monthly, I need to be bringing in two and a half grand just, just for this space. Sp- forget about any staff. Forget about the cost of the stock to bring in the electricity to turn everything on. You know, there's so much cost nowadays that for me, it you doesn't all make off. sense. You can because, cut it all off. Like you said, society is changing their mind. Mm. They don't need to see this physical store anymore. They're happy. They're content with being online. Mm-hmm. So put a little bit of money to make your actual website look nicer. That is your new store. New store, yeah. And one thing I've realized, a lot of shops in it, they can even do like their pickup or their drop-offs at different stores. So, for example, when you want to buy, I think it was a pretty little thing. You can go to yeah, Argos yeah. or something. I don't know what it Another was. Another thing goes, when you go on eBay, 
There's a certain seller you can say, uh, you can pick up from Argos. Yeah, 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 pick yeah, up yeah, that, yeah, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. that's people using the um, cross-platform build mm-hmm. together. So do you think that's the new way logistics of... Logistics stronger. Mm. Yeah, 100%. But it's the, still the thing of um, you're still technically ordering online. Mm, you're still ordering, but yeah. then that process of getting things yeah, yeah. easily shipped off or brought to you, mm. do you know what I mean? Yeah. So that's that. One thing that I started reading into is this actual crazy suit, like lawsuit that's going against Blizzard, Activision, the ones that made mm. uh, Call of Duty, World at Warcraft and stuff. And it brought out two suits against them. First one being some sort of call happen inappropriate sexual activities between females and males in cubicles and a second lawsuit against a woman that committed suicide because some sort of inappropriate pictures have been floating around mm. uh, and she basically had some sort of relationship with a supervisor pictures started getting leaked she emotionally depressed she got depressed and then committed suicide so first of all rest in peace yeah um, it's sad it's sad to hear it's it's, it's just crazy where what why would people like you've got those pictures in in uh confidence right mm-hmm. why would you then go and leak it what kind of well, a you person, know what that is yeah that's just tapped people in it let's be honest what, what mm-hmm. kind of a person do you have to be mm. to then think about it yeah these pictures yeah or whatever context it was have yeah. been sent to you in, in confidence yeah for you to then betray yeah. that person, whatever they've done to you or yeah. whatever the problem you have with each other, how do you go and send that and then ruin someone's life like that? Yeah, I can't lie to you, man. Mm. To to fix to fix messed up people, it's that's difficult. another thing. We we can't do okay. anything about that. Anymore. But what about the lawsuit? Like, the lawsuit against that? Activision, right? So I've been reading into it, right? So as a business, right, the one thing I always say is you have to breed culture. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's no smoke without a fire. Mm-hmm. So if you in your workplace are seeing something and then you're letting it go, you're saying, oh, it's nothing, it's nothing. Uh, the, back in the day, we mm-hmm. could do this and that. Or why are people always so hyped up about stuff mm-hmm. nowadays? Especially when it comes to women's rights and stuff. Some people, there's a there's a certain audience out there that believe that it's just being taken out of proportion. It's and, and fair to them, sometimes people do take advantage of situations mm-hmm. and they lie and, you know, mm-hmm. they say stuff that's not true. The issue is, though, as a business, right, you have to take this stuff really seriously. Yeah, because it can damage the brand very much. Forget damaging your brand, but you want to create a nice workplace where you can attract the best talent across the world. Mm. And the only way to do that is by having a place where people want to come and work. And it's comfortable. Exactly, comfortable, uh, nice to work at. You can't be doing that where, like, now um, people are allowing such, like, disgusting behaviour to happen. Mm-hmm. So you saying Activision's allowing that disgusting behaviour to happen? They maybe are, because, maybe they could have had certain things in place to then prevent that. Mm. Exactly, no, because um, there was complaints, but mm. the complaints were belittled. Yeah. Mm. So do you think nowadays companies should start moving more HR based? Human resources. They always have been. Yeah, yeah. but towards oh, but they should take it a lot more, more serious. serious. They take it a lot more serious. Um, and yeah, you have to take it more serious. And you have to assess each uh, situation properly mm. and have some sort of proper response to each situation as well. Um, but do you think some sort of like, for example, the girl that committed suicide? Do you think she reported it? Was that what in the article? There's nothing that I saw. So, what do you think as a company they should do in order to kind of see what's going on between each people? Maybe have one to one meetings with. Uh, That's one, one thing that I was thinking. Yeah, yeah one to one meetings. I also think sometimes, um, because it was a supervisor, right? That did yeah. this, right? You and your management, you need to have breed a certain culture in the management and make them understand that this type of behavior is not correct. And also, you need to do screening of these people a lot better mm. as well. Where do they come from? How are they acted? Yeah, better references, I guess. And, you know, you should also ask the staff behind the manager, um, how, is this, how is he as a manager? Um, has he done anything? Obviously, people can take this out of context and somebody out of spite could probably say something and mm-hmm. just to knock that guy from his position. But, like, overall, does it make sense? If 20 of the staff under him are saying, 
he's a bit, you know, mm-hmm. um, he's a bit too flirtatious. Mm-hmm. Uh, he messes around a bit too much. Like they were having here where they come work drunk and then they act like they're big men. Mm-hmm. For coming drunk, drunk that at work. behavior is not correct. Making mm-hmm. sexual exactly. jokes, so higher up. jokes about rape, which was exactly. in a bit. That's nothing to j- uh, well, talk about, especially as well. That's mad. That's mm. mad. You know what I'm saying. But Activision themselves called the action disgraceful and unprofessional, so they did step up to say, "Yo, we don't agree with but this." But that might be just because it's too late now, mm. because people have found out. Think about they have it, to yeah? save their face. Plus, uh, a lady committed suicide. Um, there's other ones that are just, you know, being harassed and whatnot. Only to then get a lawsuit and then speak out and saying, oh, this is disgraceful. Why is it only now you're talking about it? Like mm-hmm. you said, you know what I'm saying? Why now? Why now? It's mad. It's- On the other hand, you, you, you do um, carry out your business in private. You wouldn't make that public, public in yeah. the first place anyway. Or just so deal with the problem. They, so that even if they did public. deal with it, they wouldn't have told anyone, you know. Yeah. So... Um, for that reason, you don't know what was happening in the background, but they acted way too late because something like that happened, and that should have never happened. Mm. So yeah, they 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 need to uh, owe up to what mistakes they've made, and they need to make changes. Changes to that because Activision is a big company. They've produced a lot of great games. Yeah, they've got a lot of fan base, but something like this can actually destroy your brand. Mm. It can actually. But yeah, one, one thing I'd say is for businesses, maybe have a one-to-one session with uh, That's one, employee. Mm-hmm. Find out how the week's gone. Is there any complaints? Mm-hmm. What can I help you with? What are you struggling with? What not? And then think about it. Because in that way, sometimes some people, they're too scared to then go up to management or HR and talk about it. But if you're... you're com- some sort of union. Them, yeah. What's that? Do you know some workplaces they've got like a union, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or... It, as I said, like if they come up to them, maybe then they might feel a bit more comfortable as speaking out. Okay, this and this happened this week. I'm not really comfortable about mm-hmm. that. So maybe one to one sessions or just you know, they also find something in place just to find out. Find out exactly. What's I happening. do also think that they have to have more women of power in there as well because they did talk about yeah, exactly like how, how majority all women. the women when they come in they get paid less or they don't get more progression. So as uh, as mm. staff, if you're female, you probably would feel more. Uh, inclined to tell your story or speak out about it if you had a woman in power as well yeah. that could do something about it because you might be a little in that sense. you know what yeah, this is a safe space it's basically. 2021 we shouldn't be thinking about all kind of harassment rape and all these personally i think in a in a uh, application right mm. i don't think um gender should be being put in the um what do you call it application or cv that's what i'm saying it's 2021 mm. Because you should, for your business sake anyway, you should be thinking of the best person with the best skill set. Yeah. You shouldn't be thinking of, oh, we need a male. Or That's why I don't want to impose the thing either of having to have a certain amount of females or having to have a certain amount of males. Because then that could just end up you having to fill out criteria. Just for the means, sake of yeah, it. Yeah, for the yeah. sake of it. So, yeah. oh, even though that there's a great male there that could do really well in this management role... I'm going to have to give it to the woman mm. just so that I meet a quota. That's why I think that's not right either. Mm. But I think that we should have more gender neutral um, CVs. CVs and gender neutral sort of interviews. Um, it's hard though because obviously you're going to be biased. A person, I think people are going to be biased. Yeah. And that's something you can't stop. That's why they try and put these quotas in. But I also do think the quotas is not correct either mm. because you should be hiring what's best for your business. Mm. Mm. Based on talent and skill. Based on talent and skill, exactly. Yeah. Fair enough. So we've all cleared up the thoughts on that. There were a couple little things I was looking into, and I just want you guys to give it like a little thumbs up or thumbs down, like a level up or down to it. So Virgin Media and O2 launched a data bank to help end data poverty. So basically, they're providing free data to a lot of poverty people, people that can't afford home, internet, mobile data or anything and trying to provide as much internet as possible mm. i think they said something about they could do 400 and something million hours or something mm-hmm. so which is crazy so what do you guys think firstly virgin and o2 could i get some free data <laughs> um nah all jokes aside no that's great that's great because um obviously there's a lot of people it's it's what's happening right now in society where a lot of people that are falling into the homeless ranks, right? Um, before it used to be the thing of they have no bank account and they have no suit to go and change their life. Mm. 
Well, now there's another aspect that's been added into there. HSBC. That is not HSBC. They're trying to solve that mm. issue by mm. providing them banks. But now there's another aspect in there where most applications and stuff are now online. So now you have to have internet as well to apply to yeah, these jobs. Sure. Not even that. We're in a yeah. pandemic. Everyone's stuck at home. So if you haven't got mobile data or yeah. if you haven't got inter- home in the internet, what, what can you do? You can't even socialise. I think that's going to cause depression. Mm. People are just going to be looking at walls and drums and what can you yeah. really do? Exactly. So that's an issue. So there's a lot of things that kind of, it, it does help, but then asking the question is, how's this good for business? What do you mean, how's this good for business? As in like, if you give giving a free internet away. Sure. Maybe they're only so giving it to a, 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 you know, like a, a sector. Right. Bro, this is for poverty people. Yeah. These people would not have afforded their internet, internet. anyway. Anyway. Yeah. So, I mean, and anyway, these big networks, they make too much money anyway. Mm. They need to reduce the price for everyone. So they give it. But at the end of the day, do you not also think sometimes now internet itself should be free anyway? No. Why? It's a business. Yeah. Yeah, business but there's, still has to make money. But there's more things that you could be charging inside the internet. Do you know what I'm saying? It's just like how they're doing the NFT system where... You're that, buying that has a business plan for the companies that already exist, like Virgin O2. Mm, yeah. Um, Firstly, it's just this that, infrastructure and this down. network here. Yeah, I've worked in these scenarios before. These cost billions and billions to of set pounds up. for them to sell. They cannot give that for free. Come on, yeah, it, that's, just, it doesn't make sense. That doesn't make sense as a business. But, how does that make sense? Mm. As you were saying earlier, touching wood on the whole application thing. So that's a very good um, idea, by the way. If you think about it. A lot of people, like nowadays, people don't hand in their CVs to people anymore. It's just everything. It's digital. Digital. Yeah. So when you're applying for a job, you're going on Indeed and whatnot. So you need the internet. Now, if it's someone in, let's say, uh, in the poverty sector, mm-hmm. where they, they're homeless, mm-hmm. they need access to internet to then apply for a job, mm-hmm. to then get out of that situation, they need internet. So, so that's, that's one puppy. people, yeah? Mm-hmm. Now you have kids that need to go to school. Um, schools should provide this sort of stuff but I know a lot of schools that are really behind this sort of stuff right they do give like powerpoint and stuff like that for free you know? but we're talking about internet internet you know? we're talking which about is them being able to actually go on to their teams or their skype call without internet you can't, you can't even, even do, do that you can do research online just you know find yeah. articles on there when you used to go on my maths or whatever you know, you I've gonna, seen situations be where like you don't realise but these are like normal families right but they have to borrow their mum's phone because she's the only one that has internet in the house. And now if you have two or three kids, how do you decide which one now goes to school mm. and which one doesn't go to school? Yeah. Who gives that's very difficult. the right yeah, that's to very... say, okay, you can go to school because I have enough data for you, but you two, you're going to just have to sit and wait because his school's more important. That's not fair. Mm. So everyone deserves to go to school, especially now it's all online. Um, well, everything's gone back to um, people being at home, what do you call it, at school now. But in case we do ever go into another lockdown, yeah, that's a good thing. That's a good, a good initiation, initiative from them. Mm-hmm. And um, they've also requested more people to join in. So all the other brands, apart from Virgin and O2, get involved. Get involved, 100%. You're making so much money. Give something back, back to the community. 100%. Those little money that you're giving away in terms of GBs is not going to do anything to you anyway. I buy 80 gigs worth of internet yeah, from Giftgaff, yeah, mm-hmm. for 20 quid, whatever, yeah. I use about 40 to 30, yeah. Where does my other 40 Red. to 50 gig go, go Anna? Mm. I don't know my 40, 50 gig to someone yeah. else, Anna. Mm. That's what you want to do. And if you think about it like that, they Hush probably me. have mm. so much. Hush me, please. <laughs> no. You know, Wi Fi here anyway. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they could go give that to so many other people because they've technically charged me for mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Why don't so they benefit at why least? Why don't they go give that to somebody yeah. else, right? Mm. I think now the, uh, the, the actual donation is, I think, about 7.5 billion million. Gigabytes of data, you know, yeah, and that can lot. actually kind of it's worth as all. Well it's a lot, point, but at the same time, it can go very. It can, it can go twelve uh, a lot, but it's worth about twelve point five million pounds, mm-hmm. and I think they're trying to get that across to about two hundred thousand people by twenty twenty three. Still so, a lot of people. There's still a lot of people. Not people, but more companies help. That could be even quicker. Yeah, it yeah. can be done a lot. That's only two companies. I know six major network companies that mm. could get that. What you could double, triple that, so you could get up to nine hundred thousand or eight hundred thousand people. 
that is actual helping. Helping, well. yeah. Yeah, definitely a level up from me. Obviously, level up from me as well. A level up from you as well. Um, another thing that I've been looking at, and it's to do with the whole Rashford situation. Um, BT unver- uh, unveils a wall of hope to memorize Rashford's, Rashford's message. Um, would this actually help put hope in people's heart? What do you think? Yeah, I mean, what is it really doing? No, nah, this opinion? is a this is a you know marketing scheme by BT. Mm-hmm. Good on them. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, but yeah, it's definitely the right message to put out there. So Correct. If you know that um, Rashford has a memorial of his face in his hometown somewhere in Manchester, mm-hmm. um, and after the Euros, he got defaced. Mm. So when they covered it up with a bin bag, loads of people from his local community made posters and stuff and stuck it all over the wall to cover yeah, where that, they, yeah. you know, messed up his face on it. Um, so now BT are just taking all those messages, digitalizing them, and putting them into a wall. So it's it's a great thing. Um, it's good because you know it just shows that even though there's so much hatred out there, there's some benefit. another set of people that are gonna fight against that hatred. You're always going to get bad with evil, uh, bad with good. Mm. It's, it's just natural. But There's a lot of bad and good. outweighing that bad. So that's yeah, thing. but I just think that people that do this sort of stuff, they just need to get in trouble for it. I think racism is like one of the biggest crimes, but it just doesn't get any crime for it. It's like a hidden crime, isn't it? It's a hidden yeah. crime. Well, of course, there is hate speech, and if you get caught doing it... Yeah, you get you, in trouble. So the punishments are there, but it's just you can't find those people to punish them. Yeah. Which is, at least BT's kind of doing their part of it. Yeah, I don't know how much sincerity is from BT. You know what I mean, but then, yeah, it's just thing on, thing on. But the second one, that, so you both agree that's still a positive thing, though. Yeah, hundred yeah, yeah. percent. So um, the second thing that I was looking to, and it's kind of interesting. Third, kind of, third, sorry, stuff for us. Third was um, how Instagram. It's kind of trying to make a default private account for any account that's made under the age of 16, 16 or below. So do you think that really is going to help keep the mm. accounts private? Do you know what I mean? Is it... Listen, how are you, man? Yeah. Whose Facebook age is their real Facebook age? Mine, mine is. Mine, mine is. Mine is. I made Facebook when I was 16, 17, one of them. I think I made mine 15 15 yeah, yeah. 15 yeah I made mine when you said 10 when basically my birthday is 98 yeah and I put 91 98 <laughs> why because at the time that means you'd have uh, you couldn't I, make one yeah yeah because they said you have to be above a certain age yeah, you before be you can actually make so one. how old were you when you made it I was in year 7 or something man so that's that, like 12 that's yeah. 12 Oh, okay. The only reason I put 91 is because that's my older brother's age. So, I just put so you just put that one. Yeah. Yeah. But do you think now this one, you can still make it, but they're going to make it private though. It's like, do you know what I'm saying? No, but people are just going to put a fake age. But could, if the account's been no, so put the, as by private. By default, it's, it's a private account. account. But if can you not go on the settings? Enough, they can go on settings. Settings and, and change it and make it public. But I feel like it's, it's good in a sense because... Some kids might not not know that you can make their public. Um, their, sorry, their account. You're on about kids, man. Kids know everything. Every, bro, You're I've seen my five year old cousin account. on an iPad. You never know that. Searching things. No, like, it's not you never know. No, we no, know that I'm kids can change that. What the hell? Bro, that's the easiest thing to do. I'm t- I'm seeing even three year olds on iPads mm. YouTubing videos that they watch on. But I got. So, I mean, Teletubbies and stuff. I think it's a lazy way. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't think, think that's honestly. Good. I think it's a lazy way. I think where you need to actually because this is the thing, right? It's so bad, but at the end of the day, um, there's a reason why you called a kid, right? Is because your mind is not developed to the point where you can be left alone yet. Mm. Even yes, you can eat, you can sleep, you can you know go to the toilet, and you can do mm. all of that. But I'm talking about you can't make those proper decisions yet in life. Yeah. So the 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 emphasis should be on the other way around. There should be systems in place where it doesn't allow older people to contact 
these 16 year old cunts. You shouldn't be able to follow them. You shouldn't be able to. What? What? Okay. What okay, if it's okay, a cousin so or an in uncle? That sense, yeah. Of course, you can set those. How do you know right? that that person isn't putting a, a fake age themselves as well? Mm. Then if they put a fake age, then they can't contact anybody. So I'd say if I they think that's do too ID complex. That's too like you were touching on last time. Yeah, ID, but that's a bit private. Yeah, but then some. Yeah, I guess. It's so there's like this a new whole, social media app, yeah. Bennett. Yeah, I think it's called Open. Open, yeah. Um, and the way that they're thinking of social media is. In order to open up your social media account, you will have to verify your age, your face, everything with your ID and everything. So everyone on this platform is held accountable Mm -hmm. because everyone has given over their details from Mm -hmm. the start. Yeah. That now leaves a place where people can't be racist because if you are, you're going to get sentenced for it. You can't go talk to underage kids because you're going to get caught for it. Mm. I think that's where social media will end up going. I think the only people that will ever complain about that type of stuff is, is people that want to do something malicious and bad and hide it behind the word freedom of speech and being able you know to hide. Is, yeah? You can't hide in real life. Mm-hmm. So why are you allowed to hide online? Mm. The other thing is as well, mm. if they say ID verification, you're putting your name down anyway. You're putting your age down anyway. So you're giving the exact same details. It's just you're giving like, the exact same details. You know so why can't I just back exactly. it that it's true? It's true enough. Yeah. I think, I think that's the way to go. Um, doing this whole okay. sixty default, year old default default is I'm not com- useless. I, I, I don't think it. that's gonna help anything. The company is. I thought Instagram anyway. When you have an account, they make it private. No, you have to make it public. No, no, it's public anyway. I think it's public. They just made it opposite. Um, it yeah, yeah, make... it's public first, and then you put it on private. If private you want to, put, no, yeah. it's public. Sure? No, yeah. it, no. If you no, make it, I, account, have to, I have to enable mine to be public. I think mine you put yourself private. at sixteen or below, then, bro. I'm not gonna lie to you. When I made actually, one, actually, actually, firstly, actually, they've actually, only actually. introduced this now. Yeah, I know, but, but I'm, I'm talking saying about in general. In general, I, I, right. I can't remember, but I yeah, think your account when is I made private, my account, it was, it was and private. then it becomes public it's by private. you enabling it to be public. It depends. If you're so I think what it is, I think you gotta read the article properly. I think it's if you're under sixteen, you can't make it public. It's always gonna no. It says default. That's what it says. Sure. Okay, so yeah, so yeah, yeah, it was. It was by default. It says by it's, default. Uh, it's private, and then they can go into the settings and change it if they wanted to. So what's the? Do you know what I mean it don't make sense? In my opinion, it don't make sense, Anna. I just feel like it's that whole thing with the iOS fourteen. By default, they can't track you anymore. Mm. But then, if you go, you can put settings. You can change it. Change it. So it's, just, it's yeah, right. By private default. So that's just a load of crap. There's no That's useless. Really crap. That ain't doing anything. I feel like mm. because it's, it's one of those small things to look. Oh, look, us social media companies. Yeah, I guess we're making a difference, but in reality, you're not doing anything. Then we mm. need to find a better solution. Because sneaky kids are always sneaky. Mm. They'll do what they need to do, but those are the kids that still need to be protected. It's it's an issue, right? It's like, oh, but why did that 14 or 50 year old get a fake? driver's license and go into the club they should be held accountable for it mm. no mm. their parents should be held accountable for it because yeah. you raised a kid that doesn't know wrong between true right. true yeah. you get it, it so a lot more sense of that. you know yeah they did have their own app that they wanted to start releasing for people under the age of 13 or something yeah they're thinking of more releases answers. but uh, um, Instagram, Instagram they're trying themselves. to make some under 13 year old. the thing is it's going to be kiddish in a way and the kids don't want to be kiddish me personally I'd say I'm negative against that because kids at that age they shouldn't be on phones and social media they well they have it like, anywhere aren't it you, yeah. you can't stop what's out there yeah. it's about making a but I'd say the way you raise separate. them as well it's, it's honestly the way you raise them as well yeah but yeah, no. So, I mean, um, social. We can't keep on saying that we need to raise them. There needs to be an impetus on these companies that are making so much money. Mm. I think definitely AI is the way to go with this. Any sort of message coming into your account from any sort of older person should be blocked. Or blocked straight away. Blocked, blocked because if it is your mom or if it is your dad, they can contact approach. you somewhere else. Anna. They don't need to contact you through social media. That shouldn't be their first point of contact. But, yeah. Yeah. Why not? What if your phone? Just think about this your phone dies or whatever you log into someone else's phone social media and you contact them through socials why why, why is it going to get blocked that's why can't you that's making to, it difficult why can't you log into your email <laughs> i'm just <laughs> then that's another thing it's the same shit it's the same but i'm saying social media is the issue most you know pedophiles don't go through your email do they you never know mate 
You never know the what most people, of the way that they you get know how to they think. You don't know how they think, man. Social media. Who checks their emails anyway? Right? That's what I'm saying. Well, okay, then in that case, why would the kid check his email? True, true, true. I get all of I've, that. In, but you, in that time, you could also, hey, friend, I'm borrowing your phone to log into that. Maybe I can just call my mum and dad instead on the phone. Whether they don't memorize the number. He's wow. gone, he hasn't got his phone. His phone's dead. Yeah, this I don't seems, remember this every seems, content. This it seems way too minute mm. for the issue of people being groomed. Groomed, yeah. I don't think that outweighs it's, that. It's a, mm. such a big issue. That, yeah. yeah, it's so many things to tackle. Because mm. yeah. you're gonna. What, find, what if Instagram find didn't exist? Blockage. How would you have called your mum and dad? Oh no, Instagram's not around. That's it's it. Not, I'm lost forever. Yeah. You know, not. come on, man. There's that's more important than that. Mm. Yeah. So. They need to put something in that. And that AI should also be able to do the same for racism. Because the thing is, yeah, as soon as... I don't even have to write the word COVID. I can put a picture of a vaccine without any writing on it. They pick it up through the metadata that that's an image of a vaccine. And already they've put the underneath. Don't believe everything on COVID, da-da-da. Read the truth, da-da-da, online. They've already put their little statement mm, on it. Very true. If they can mm. do that... They can do the same thing for people that are being nurses and stuff like that. Yeah, but I think as well, they in, sometimes block or whatnot. Yeah. Instagram itself, they already admitted that the technology kind of bypassed a lot of racist comments and emojis and everything for the incident itself. They actually admitted it themselves. So if their technology you're saying already can pick up vaccines and stuff, why can't they pick up racist or That's what grooming? we're saying. That's well, what we're saying. Yeah. yeah. It's difficult. Not difficult. No, they just. I think somebody this is... in these social media companies. I think their priorities are different. Mm. Their priorities is to how how to get more accounts and how to get more money and how to put more ads out there. Basically, yeah, they're, they're not focusing on on a large problem that they're also creating with the with the, with the platform. All the good that they bring and congrats, we congrats them on yeah. all the good that they bring. Yeah. We use their platforms. Yeah, this is the way that we grow our business. business. It's one of the IGTV. Most, yeah, yeah, it's the most influential platforms. These Instagrams, Instagram and Live, YouTube's, and TikTok's the reels. And everything. Yeah. So when we give you your props, you also have to take the criticism with it mm. as well. And this is a message to all these social media companies right now. You need to fix up. You need to solve this issue because. This is an issue that is affecting a lot of kids' life, a lot of people. That's why for a while they got rid of the um, the likes. You can hide that stuff. You can still do that now. Yeah. So you make these little changes, right? But you need to make these bigger changes um, and you need to control this issue. I think that's your main priority. Forget everything else because everything else, the internet works it out themselves. They know how to use a feature. They know how to enjoy the platform. You need to work on moderating the platform. Mm. So... Get on to that. Mm. So, is it a thumbs up or a thumbs down? For me, it's a thumbs down. After what you what he was explaining, it, it, it kind of is deemed useless because, yeah. It, it's, it's a thumbs down. They're just yeah. doing the littlest thing to say that they're doing something, but not in reality. Yeah, so me, personally, anything. I was looking at it a different way until he started explaining it a bit more. So, what was you looking into it then? I was seeing it as, like, maybe they're still trying to then um, prevent the people, like, nonsense and stuff going into their accounts and, you know, mm-hmm. perving on them and whatnot. So then then he kind of explained it is they can simply just go on it and make it public. Yeah. If someone really wanted to make it private or public, they'd do that themselves. If they yeah. want to kids then make it public what's good again, for them. Kids exactly. don't know what's good for them. So they'll do something because they think it's cool. And yeah. then they'll end up getting themselves in a situation. Mm-hmm. That's why it's up to these social media platforms to regulate it. Yeah. Because you can't put such pressure on kids. On the, yeah, on the kids themselves. So yeah. you need to start putting other... So need, they need better solutions, basically. So, and yeah, take so thumbs, thumbs down, down for yeah. you as well. Okay, so a little thumbs up out of the way. Um, I kind of want to bring a scenario on a business that we might want to help. Right? And one thing I was looking into, a lot of companies like clothing brands, uh, this scenario base was a company that does majority of their sales on Shopify. Yeah, they kind of literally focus on streetwear graphics, and they've only streetwear got like, graphics. No, no graphic streetwear stuff. You know, graphical streetwear. You know, streetwear. You know what streetwear is? Like cargo pants and okay, yeah. that streetwear, urban style basic clothing. And it's graphical images and stuff. So they've only got like 2K followers on it's their Instagram. Mm. They're trying to scale up, but been open for two years. So 
uh, they want to launch a new campaign to grow their store. What advice do we have as a group? Mm. For me personally, I'd say if it's a clothing brand, try to reach out to an influencer. Yeah. See if they can, you can get them on the ad, or see if you can get them um, shouting it out. Yeah, or some sort wearing of shout a brand. Out. With clothing, I feel like a lot of it is inf- influenced by uh, some sort of influencer or some sort of large role model. If you think about Bape, um, no one ever knew about Bape till started, uh, Chris Brown started wearing it, and it kind of just blew up. Um, there's other brands, uh, there's loads, but no, yeah. I'd say 100% influencers. That's why they do a lot of stuff. Yeah? yeah, and if you can't afford influencers, yeah, reach out to them, offer some sort of affiliate program with them where they'll get a percentage of every sale that they can get you with a code that you provide them. Um, and then you can set up that code on Shopify, etc. And then um, you can track the sales that that person has received. You mm. Offer some 5 10% discount of, with that user when they come through that influencer. And then obviously count it up and then you pay them based on what they actually get you. It's the best way. Imagine a scenario where you don't have to put in any advertisement money, but you get the sales back and then you give the advertisement yeah. money. That's the one of the worst things about advertisements is that you are taking Spend a money. big risk. Yeah. Spending money. Yeah. You don't know if it's going to bang. You don't know if it's going to bang. Yeah. So in this situation, you're getting all of the positives mm-hmm. without the, the negatives. negatives. Yeah. So it's perfect. Um, you might have to offer a bit more in towards the the affiliate link just because um, for the uh, you know the person to take it a bit more seriously. But if that essentially grows your business. Yeah, but if you actually think well. about it, if you've got a big follower, like Ronaldo, yeah, it might exactly. say something... Well, how I many don't people? Think these guys, no, these I'm not. Guys, I'm just saying. I'm not. I'm, I'm, I'm making an example. No, I'm making an example, isn't it? I'm just yeah. saying. Imagine you got a large about. follower base. Even forget about these YouTubers, bro. Their their followers are like cults. Do you know what I mean? They love them yeah. in every single. Do you know what I'm saying? So if they say, "Yo, listen," how many times have you seen them say, "Yo, go bombard this guy's YouTube channel," and they're literally just dis- dis- the link below or this, or and, this that. and that. We know everyone's favorite VPN. VPN. So. <laughs> <laughs> You get the point I'm trying to make. So a lot of people are already doing this anyway. So it's just following what already works, not doing your own little thing. A lot of people nowadays, when they start making ads, they like to be a bit different, try new things, but that can actually kind of sometimes bite you back on the ass. Do you not think? Yeah. When you try different techniques, different things that don't work, a lot of people try different, like even Facebook ads itself, sometimes focusing primarily on Facebook ads itself is not a great thing to do. A lot of time focusing on the actual brand itself, people will... Getting that aware uh, brand awareness out there, letting people know exactly who you guys are, what you guys stand for, what the actual message behind the brand is. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? The major me- thing for me is if you've tried it and it hasn't worked, change it. Mm. Try something else and see if that works. Trial and error, just keep going at it. Mm. Keep going at it, keep on changing your technique. Or getting in touch with us. And obviously, we <coughs> know your thing, it? <laughs> Very simple, very simple. <laughs> But a great funnel would also help as well. So some sort of system to kind of keep bringing people back into it, providing value. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's all about building an email list. If you build an email list, you basically grab the clientele that's uh, metaphorically walking through your store every week. Yeah. Touching every clothes so, because you're gonna send them emails of every new clothing discounts. Yeah, you're gonna send them discounts all mm-hmm. the time, and they will at that one point because somebody normally, if they like a style of clothing, that's the type of clothing they're gonna wear. Mm-hmm. They're just waiting for it to make sense for them. So yeah. send them discount codes, send them you know offers, and they'll come back to you. I you feel like build that original list through your funnels. Funnels, and another great thing to do is imagine when you think of it like bringing people in through some sort of offer and i'll say like imagine it's like a gym brand yeah so when it's a gym brand imagine for example you come in and you can think of this in your own scenario so this uh, streetwear so imagine it's a gym um clothing brand what on belts whatever imagine you do like some workout routine or you do some sort of pdf showcasing how to do I don't know deadlifts or whatever. So so so. So you cater to the to, uh, to, the, to the audience. Yeah. So imagine now you're helping them do their workout. Yeah. And then cool, you're doing back exercises. You kind of kind of later on sell them on with the the belts. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? And then afterwards, when you upsell them even more, okay, yeah. cool. Get this gym vest or shorts, and then later on sell them more this gym hat. Yeah. Protein uh, bottle, whatever. 
So you can yeah, keep selling like them. Keeping it seasonal based as Seasonal well. based. So imagine yeah. when you focus on one client, uh, your, your whatever your product is, it's got its own theme. Yeah. Focus on what other values you can bring on top of it, put it on top, and then drag them in with your actual product afterwards. It's all about bringing value in first mm-hmm. before you can ever ask, yo, let me, let me take your money. But do you know what I mean? Let people actually longevity want your stuff. Yeah, 100%. Well, yeah. So is that everything for you guys? On yeah. this, yeah, I'd say, yeah, influencers, that influencers focus on the brand, and that's it, man. Yeah, try something new. Mm. So, other than that, what are you guys saying, man? No, good, man. We'll be busy this week. Um, very busy, very, 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 very busy. We've got a couple of stuff we need to start planning after this, aren't it? Yeah, yeah, we've got a couple of stuff to plan, we've got a couple of events, a couple of weddings. So, so it's yeah. a, alhamdulillah, it's a good thing, though. Yeah, yeah, of course. Busy. Busy. So yeah, so I might as well wrap this up. Hope everyone enjoyed this podcast. It's been a lot more, do you know what I mean, conversational based while the other ones were a bit yeah, more let structured. Us know if you enjoyed the uh the new seating arrangement. New seating, new structure, new vibe. So yeah. Yeah, yeah. Everyone make sure to like, comment, subscribe on this podcast. Mm. Tell a friend to tell a friend. Do you know what I mean? Show, on Instagram as well. show your dad, your mum. Uh, your aunties, do you know what I mean? Yeah, everyone can get something out of this. Do you know what I mean? We're trying to benefit. And plus, if you guys do have your own business or your own type of company that you guys need yeah, help, just reach out in reach the out. comments for free advice. Free advice. Hey, we'll come Free in. advice, you know, just put it in the comment section and you free will stuff get free is the best advice. Stuff. Free stuff is always the best stuff. And plus, also on top of that, if you've got any other topics you guys are interested in and we haven't spoke about, you can comment that on the blog. Yeah. And that's it, bro. You man, it was enjoying speaking to you guys as well. So, adios, adios, adios. Bye bye. See you later.